good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. I greet you all according to your time zones. It's always pleasure and honor to meet you again. I want to start by saying I'm sorry I've been away for some time. I just had too much on my desk and I had to attend to them first. But I'm glad you patiently waited for me and that's why you're here watching this video. Thank you for your subscriptions, for your comments, for your views. They are a motivation in this course. They make me look for more information that we can always share together, empower one another for healthy living. Today's topic is about the first 1,000 days of life, the window of opportunity. Welcome. The first 1,000 days of life, which are also known as the window of opportunity, refers to the period from the time of conception to the second birthday of a child. I am drawing my explanation from a scientist known as Dash, the year 2017. The first 1,000 days of life are broken down into three categories. It first starts with 270 days of pregnancy and then the next 365 days of the first year of a child and then the next 365 days of the child's second year. The first 1,000 days of life, ladies and gentlemen, have significant impact on the health physical health and mental health of a child. It runs all the way from pregnancy to the lactating mother to breastfeeding during the first six months, that is exclusive breastfeeding, and then to continued breastfeeding after six months while doing complementary feeding. It is important to note that proper nutrient intake during this period has lasting impact on the health of the child even when they are still as a child and even in adulthood. It is important to know that proper nutrient intake during the first 1000 days of life has lasting permanent effect on the health of a child. It is also important to know that neglecting proper nutrient intake during the first 1,000 days of life will result into negative health impact throughout the life of this child and even when they grow into adults. Inadequate nutrient intake during pregnancy is associated with things like stunting, infections, diseases, and mortality. And those children who survive this are at risk of the metabolic diseases such as diabetes among others. It is also important to know that around 50 neurotransmitters or what I would simply say the brain chemicals are formed during the first 1000 days of life. That's why we need to understand that the child mental development, the ability of the child to learn, to interact with other people, to read, to talk, to argue out, to reason out, to think, all those processes are developed in the first 1,000 days of life. I will start by talking about nutrition during pregnancy. And I will say this, an expectant mother needs to take adequate balanced diet, at least three main meals in a day and two snacks. The meals must be balanced, they must be nutritious. In other words, the, all the food groups should be represented. There should be components from the cereals and starches, from vegetables, from fruits, from dairy products, and from meat and meat products. Every plate, every main meal of an expectant mother must be nutritious and well balanced. I have said at least three main meals in a day and at least two snacks in a day. An expectant mother also requires adequate rest and also they should exercise moderately. Do not engage in strenuous exercise, but moderate exercise. Also, I want to encourage expectant mothers to visit antenatal clinic for at least three to four times before delivery. At this clinic, 
there are important monitoring and growth activities that are done. For example, the doctor or the nurse will check, is the baby breathing? Is the baby having the right weight? Is the baby well positioned in the womb? And all that. And also, during the prenatal visit, the mother is given supplements. And I want to encourage every mother, every woman, every expectant mother, and every family person, whether you are a husband, you are a father, a you, or you are anybody who is interested in family matters, encourage expectant mothers to go for clinics. They are given supplements, which include important micronutrients like folic acid, vitamin A, and iron. These micronutrients are needed at the early stage of fetal development. If the mother does not take these micronutrients at that stage, the baby will be born with complications or deformities. Who wants to have a baby who has a problem with the spinal cord, for instance? Who wants to give birth to a baby who has a cleft palate? Who wants to give birth to a baby who has a problem of eyesight, in other words, night blindness? Certainly no one is expecting to have such a baby. Therefore, let us play our roles. As, as mothers, as family people, let us encourage expectant mothers to go for clinic. Let us ex uh, encourage them to take the supplements that they are given during these visits. And I know women will complain and say that the supplements have a bad taste, they feel nauseated. I just want to tell you that try whatever means possible to finish the dose as you have been given. It is very, very important for growth and development of the fetus, of the baby inside the womb. I also want to encourage expectant mothers to ensure that they have, they are psychologically stable. Try to avoid stress or manage it just to interfere, to avoid interfering with the fetal growth and development. I will skip now from uh, from the nutrition intake of an expectant mother and I will go directly to complementary feeding. I will not talk about breastfeeding because I explained exclusively uh, about breastfeeding. If you did not watch my video on breastfeeding, just look for one. It is on my channel. My channel is Simplified Nutrition Guidelines for African. You can get it on YouTube. Watch that video on how to do breastfeeding. So about complementary feeding, I have a, an example here, a recommended feeding regime for children 6 to 24 months. In other words, what food should you feed a baby at what months and in what quantities or frequency? That's what we are calling feeding regime. So a child who is 6 months, as you can see, they need soft porridge or well mashed foods that are in light consistency. The food should be very light because their digestive system is still growing, so they need things that are light, that can move well along the digestive system without straining or causing constipation. Then you need to begin with starches and progress gradually to other food groups. I know some women would start directly with the other food groups, but it is recommended to start with starches. Starches are things like uh, maize porridge, or millet porridge, uh, Irish potatoes. Start with the starches first, then progress gradually to other food groups like now proteins and all that. Introduce one food at a time. Do not bring in the morning you have given the child porridge and it's the first day. At noon you are giving the child an egg. In the evening you are giving the child spinach. You are confusing the child. Let the child adapt to one food until you are sure they are comfortable with it, they are taking it well, then you move to the next. So introduce one food item at a time. Do not force the baby to take a given food. If he or she refuses, stop and then reintroduce later. Don't force the baby. Let the baby take the food willingly. If the baby is not comfortable, you can stop. Then after a week or three days, you try to reintroduce it again. Examples of foods for children six months are, you can do pumpkin. Of course, we have said the foods must be soft or mashed. So even if it's 
pumpkin, you boil, then you mash it. We have porridge, we have mashed Irish potato, we have fresh fruit juices. Don't go to buy the juices on the market or the ones that are, you know, in the shops. Buy the, the popo, make the juice. Buy the watermelon, make the juice. You can also make cooked spinach very softly and give the baby. At this age of six months, feed only twice a day just twice and that's why we say that during a uh, complementary feeding make sure you are also continuing with breastfeeding because you do not you are not supposed to feed more than twice in a day and if you are not breastfeeding then that is not enough for this baby so you do continue breastfeeding as you give complementary foods at this age of six months you only give complementary foods twice a day and in one feed you give two to three tablespoons per feed then now we come to a child who is seven to eight months also needs food that are soft, preferably mashed. Examples of foods here you can give soft posho or what you call ugali and silver fish or daga and then spinach. That is just an example of a meal. Or Irish potato, which of course I've said it must be mashed. Then you can do minced meat and kels. Or you can do plantain, which is called matoke, and beans and pumpkin leaves. What I'm trying to do here is that I'm just trying to show you how you can combine the foods to make a balanced, nutritious diet. It doesn't have to be exactly what I've shown here, but it must be balanced, containing starches, protein, and vitamin. Then you can give them fluids, such as beef soup and also fresh fruit juices. Feed them three times a day, and one feed should be a half a cup. Of 250 ml. A child who is 9 to 11 months, they need finely chopped foods. At that time, they can be able to pick the foods by their hands. That's why we are saying finely chopped foods. Example, pieces of boiled eggs. You can boil an egg and cut into pieces. Small pieces of uh, soft beef, soft bread, rice, beans, fish, fresh fruits, soft pieces of fish, well-cooked vegetables, soft fruits, Make sure they are soft and into small pieces that the baby can be able to pick. But you combine the different items to form a balanced diet. You can use the example I have shown for the child with 7 to 8 months. Make sure the food is balanced. Then you feed 3 times a day plus 1 snack. So And, and in a feed you give 3 to 4, uh, 3 quarter cup per feed. In other words, you give... Uh, three feeds per day and one feed should be three quarter a cup. A child who is 12 to 24 months basically has grown and has adapted to family foods. So you can feed this child on just the normal family foods but make sure they are soft and ensure that every serving is nutritious and well balanced. You can feed three times a day plus two snacks. Give one cup per feed. So we've come to the end of my presentation today. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for following it up to the end. I just want to encourage everyone, every parent, every family person, invest in the first 1,000 days of life. It is the golden gift you can give to your child because it runs all the way until their adulthood. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Bye.